Hi, welcome to TFLP Microcasters. We are live tonight. Uh, I've got myself, and then I've got the usuals, Christian and Anna. What up? And then we brought Good in evening. Ringer. We brought in Rob. I don't know if I'd go with Ringer, but I'll take it. So, anywho. Uh, so, tonight, uh, we're doing one of those fancy third-party figures. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's the reason we had to bring Rob in, because Christian was not the big spender this time. Nope. So. Christian is sticking to his goals. He said he was going to stop buying expensive third-party figures. And okay. even though this is the only way to get a accurate-looking comic book character from comic books that he loved he still skipped it i don't know what you're Good. talking about what i you know what i should do actually is i should gift um my custom rung to christian oh he does have i would i would love that actually that that's true that they got so, well. so sean did um uh from the show did this rung that is from a moon racer um, and so you can get the head off of uh, Shapeways and uh, take a Moon Racer and you can customize it if you want to make your own rung based on a Hasbro figure. Or you can get the Hasbro rung as well. Or you can spend, you know, whatever for to get MMC. I like that custom one. I always have. I think it's cool. I like it too. Oh, it's, it's definitely. It looks, it looks really nice. Like, you know. But. I'm, he did a good job, but I hate that figure and I already have way too many of it. Well, <laughs> I have the worst so, figure. so if you see this, we also we also took off some of the stuff uh, from, yeah. from the figure as well. So the combiner, you know, backpack is still on there, but like all the kibble on the sides and whatnot yeah. is, is taken off. So this is he a non-transforming figure at this point, but it can't transform into a stick. Yeah, right. I guess I guess technically it could uh, transform into a stick. So, uh, or I had one oh, thing out with oh, see, see, we got Christian over there flexing. Like he's like, oh yeah, you want to see a hundred dollar figure? Here you go, Cloud Rodimus. Boom, Cloud Rodimus. Here's another one. And another one. I bought that many years ago. The rare thing that one is actually larger than this. True. Yes. So this is a recent release from MMC. It's their Mentis figure, which or is the... it? I think the, so. The, the box says Mentis. The card says Mentis, except for the <laughs> oh, back, long. where it says Mentis. Oh, yeah. That is not going to pick up at all. The camera's not. Uh, oh, I get it. I get the card. It's, it's the thing. Well, the it's card a is a joke. It's a good joke. I like is there it a, a lot. Joke? Yes. Yeah, there's a joke. Do you think it's on purpose? You don't think it's I a typo? I do think it's on purpose. Yeah, it's absolutely Oh, of on course purpose. it is. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Good job, MC. It's cool. Who are we reviewing? Right. What are we? Exactly. Oh, that's fantastic. Which is the opposite of Ron. bring that up. We don't normally talk about Which packaging. is one that mispronunciation of Ron. See, no, I, I actually never... didn't look at the card. I never I just thought it was a typo. I always do. That's funny. I would Yeah, I like it a this. lot. Huh. There we go. We 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 learned something today. I suppose that's an Easter egg. Or perhaps a Thanksgiving egg. There you go. It's a it's a turkey egg. Those exist. <laughs> uh, speaking of that, uh we're not gonna have a show next Thursday on Thanksgiving, and I apologize about that, but I feel like my wife would just not be happy um, if I if I was doing a podcast on on Thanksgiving. So you know, she usually puts up with with all this, but uh, we're we're gonna have to skip next week. So I apologize in advance. We'll, miss we'll be okay. They'll be okay. Will this guy be okay? So this is the one figure that we got. This is what we have. I like that we, you don't even have it on camera, Anna. Like, in the little box. It's, <laughs> it's like halfway. It's on camera on my screen, but I can't tell what's showing on. There you go. Face tube. There you go. Okay. Sorry, right, the box so, is a little smaller because we've got... I've got the yes, extra camera with my... We do have the... Oh, yes, you made... You made all of us smaller except for Rob. <laughs> 
Oh, my big fat bald head it takes up a lot of space. Yeah, he needs more space. So, anywho, this is a figure that they actually snuck out on us at TFCon. This was promoted as the TFCon exclusive, even though it shipped to everyone who pre-ordered it. What a week later, two weeks later, yeah. it was something like that. It was pretty quick. It was kind of a it was a weird move because here you had all the fans that are motivated for third party figures or motivated for comic figures who are all together getting an opportunity to buy a figure they've already bought that they definitely want and can't cancel because there was no way to cancel through PFX. My my thought is, is that uh, this all, you know, was with all the COVID and shipping issues and all this kind of thing or production issues and whatnot that they just couldn't. Of course. Like, like that, that's what I would assume with all of this, because also, so this figure was a, a Planet Steel Express exclusive, which is the MMC shop, but then they've now put it up at the online retailers, but it's not coming out until at the, at those, like if you go to Big Bad Toy Store, or Chosen Prime or whatnot until the spring. And so like, I would assume oh. that they probably did that because they just shipping and all that kind of junk that, you know, they just you know, had to do it this way. And the figure was 125 at the con, a little bit less if you pre-ordered it and a little bit more if you're buying it now. So it's kind of a, it's a awkward release and it probably is mostly just because of production and shipping costs and all those sorts of things. It's probably not some sort of evil wizard plan by MMC or TF con or anyone involved. It's probably just a bunch of circumstantial stuff. I mean, normally we have what, like, you know, four, five, six exclusives at TFCon. This year we had one. And they're like, well, hey, we can bring some rungs to sell. And they're like, cool, yeah. it's something, you know. And especially for MMC, who has like two to four every year, you know. And this is all they had. And they had so, none this time, so they only had yeah. this. Yeah. No, it's yeah. it probably worked out all right. Like there were a lot of us. I waited through the line with a friend um, because she had the premium pass, and we literally just scouted to see if they had any surprises and when we confirmed it was just this and the legends megatron we went out to dinner instead you know <laughs> better use of our time yeah which is a bummer because that made the premium pass less useful but this isn't about that this is about this we now have the figure and i feel like everyone is really happy with this figure except for me which is fantastic um i quite like it it's not perfect though it's you know the main thing is just the size really it's now rung is short and i brought um i brought their hot rod as well rung is short like you know you look at some of the group photos he's he's a short dude he's smaller he's not that short he's like that short he's like a head a head too short you know which would probably like overall like be like in 15 percent larger of a toy they done. It. I don't know why it ended up this small. I mean, things that looks great outside of that. I, I mean, I think MMC in general, like all of their figures, like the Megatron is probably too small comparative to mm. you know the Hot Rod and some of those other figures. So like you know whatever. It's like an approximate like like they. I don't feel like they've ever had exact scale on on this stuff, but. Right, and the other thing about being small is, of course, size to price, right? Like, we are used to when you spend 100-ish on an MMC figure, you get something the size of that Rodimus, right? You get something in that, like, roughly the big guy scale that is, you know, not quite leader class size. If you want to go Hasbro, but taller than Voyager, that what we're used to in the Masterpiece normal guy scale. And he's smaller than that. And cost more than most of those figures used to. Uh, that's going to cause some so, sourness for people. So my my biggest complaint with a figure, just like in general, is with the ankles and the feet. So the figure yep. in general, and, and again, like this is an issue with any smaller figure and whatnot. Um, but there, I wish they would have put a heel spur on it um, for it because for me. I mean, like, it's not like it won't stand, but, like, for me, it it just, like, if you, you know, 
look at it too hard, it falls over for me. And because the toes, it just depends on how you like pose them too. Tight. And then, and whatever. So, like, he's also back heavy too with this little, you know, backpack thing, and whatnot. And so, again, like, as long as you pose him to where he's like, you know, slightly forward, then you're fine. But, like, that's one thing I really wish that they would have put a heel spur on it. I don't know. Do you guys agree or do you think that I'm I crazy agree. With what I'm saying? I think that his feet are a little bit of a, a bummer just because he is such a, um, not not just articulate, but expressionate figures. They gave mm-hmm. him, you know, eight faces with different expressions on them and all these hands with different expressions. It's really cool that he can, you know, express himself so well, except that you need to limit it pretty much all to the arms and the head because if you play with the legs too much, he falls over. So it's, it's a bummer that you can't play too much. So you can always use his little bicycle here in order to balance himself. Obviously, that's a misnomer because it's a tricycle. <laughs> but uh, segue. I uh, or you use the stand or anything else. I had no problem getting him to stand, um, but you know, as you we were talking there, I started messing with it, and that's because I don't know he's wrong. I don't. I didn't put him in any like dynamic poses when I was messing with him. I just stand him up, and even right. with his uh, as I had it earlier, and I can't remember how it goes now. You can make the scooter into a backpack and put him on, and like. If he's just standing up looking around, even then he stands completely fine. But the second I tried to have him like crouch or be a little bit dynamic or something like that, then even without the scooter, That's the thing. Uh, I run into the, the issues. But I, got, yeah, I don't put him in those poses. Though. So what's, what's funny for me is, is I actually was having more trouble when I just had him like standing up straight and down. Like, that's where I had the more, most trouble with. He kept falling over. Like If you tilt again, his ankles a little, it helps. It, huh. and, and again, it's one of those things where, it, like, I'm not saying, like, if I if I stick him on the shelf, he's not going to, he'll be fine. What I'm saying right. is, is that if it's, like, as I'm kind of messing around with him or whatever, like, he would just fall over relatively easy. The one thing that I'll huh. say about this figure, though, comparative to their... Um, their Voss figure. What what's the name? Senecus. Um, Senecus. So why was that in my brain? God. One of the things is is like so this is pretty much exactly the same height as as the other one, and but this uh, Senecus figure and this has had a ton of issues over the years. Like they've re released the figure multiple multiple times. The original run of them they had issues with them breaking. And part of it is, is that it's, it's a very thin figure as well. But like, you can tell that this is just a little bit more like thick, I guess. And like weighty, like, I, I feel like they took this figure and like learned from it and were like, okay, we're, you know, when we do this, we're not going to make it quite as thin and, and, and whatnot. And so I really do appreciate that, that I, I feel like that he's pretty solid, even though he's a thin figure. But. You also don't have to worry about transformation joints because he barely transforms. Well, that too. And that's that's definitely though, like by design. I can't fault the transformation on this at all. Actually, no. I, f- I find it pretty fun and simple. It's okay. Yeah, but it, it's as pointless as him transforming in the first place is, yes. which that's by design of you know Alex and uh, James. Yeah. Right. It's the character. It's what he's supposed to do. He captures the form of that just about as well as most figures capture cars. Right. Like he's yeah. he's gappy. He's got weird issues. Like you can't rotate it because if you rotate it, you can see him hiding behind it, which, of course, doesn't happen in the comic panels. But it's OK. You know, you can put it on a shelf and be like, look, it's the thing he turns into. Great. No one knows what it is until they have to. Great. So fun. He does it just fine. It's just that there isn't a whole lot of satisfaction to having that transformation on a toy this small for the price that it is. It's just a bummer because, like, everything about it is good. It's just the overall experience came out sour for me. I think, you know, we've had uh, some of our friends tell us that the sales on the reformatted stuff has went down. Like, he might be the last release. You know, aside for some exclusives or something that come out in the future, they may not do any new figures in this line um, because, you know, like uh, well, Chrome Dome sales were bad. And then, like, I don't think the wrong sales were great either. And I think that's why his price is what it is. 
is well, because we have they knew the- like no idea. Just to say, we're we're complete. This is complete speculation on our part. No, you know, it's not. As far as some of the stuff, no, no. I'm saying no, the. I'm not saying the sales not necessarily being as high as oh, what okay. they were. What I'm saying is is um the saying that it's oh, like, wow, the price. it may be the last one and and whatever mm. things like that but i mean the other thing too is is like the price of everything has went up like yeah. i mean if you look at masterpiece releases like cars that used to be 60 dollars are now 120 dollars. Mm-hmm. so it's kind of like that's just part of you know part of the thing i mean no it's I, entirely I, true and it's still it has the same effect on that side too though when I got Hound home and transformed him and he was so impressive and so cartoon accurate, it was just kind of a bummer looking at the Prowl figure that I thought was equally good that I paid way less money for years ago because honestly that Prowl captured Prowl just as well as the Hound captured Hound. It's the same thing with him. It's like (laughs) this captures Ron as well as most of the other MMC figures capture their characters, you know, as well as the Chrome Dome captures chrome dome but that thing was the same price came with a little buddy and it's much bigger yeah i mean i think it's it's one of those you know that with if they made less or they knew they were going to sell less yeah it kind of just comes back to something i know i've said probably a stupid amount of times that prices are made up you know it's like hey here's what we need to sell these for to make it worthwhile for us to do it and i'm sure they knew like this is a smaller toy what can we do to make it feel worthwhile And so they jammed it full of accessories and doodads Mm -hmm. and knickknacks. Well, I don't know why. Why would anybody thumbs down extra stuff? That makes no sense. I I hate. Okay, I haven't spoken in a while, but uh, when I saw that this came with like thirty heads, I thought that was the jankiest crap I've seen in a really long time. I think it's a horrible move. Two at maximum, maybe three. Like how many are in there? Eight? It's ridiculous. It's eight. Uh, you know what's gonna happen? Four gonna expressions, one, glasses, and no glasses. One on the head, on the neck, <laughs> and you're gonna put the other seven in a box forever. That's well, not that's the wrong view though. I gotta keep them that's, close by, honestly. The thing is you don't want the other seven, but the thing is different people are gonna pick their favorite one. Right. They get used as the release and it doesn't add to the cost the way people think it does. It really yeah, does. Do the rest of you have I'm sad, worried, scared face with glasses on? Because that's what I'm using right now. No. no. But like, there are there are two in there that I could barely I, see. I the don't difference. know which one. Which one is mine? I don't know. Anna, is that is that the same one? I think it's the default face. Yeah, I have the default. No, on I that. I switched up the. It's a thought of I oh, did I switch, or maybe interesting. I did, you know what? Maybe I did. Got the default face. I, hmm, I wonder if that means it's just kind of good enough for, generally speaking, everyone. I switched it to is. the default but face. The other ones have no harm. Okay, so Some let's talk about the faces it. real fast. There's the yeah. default face. There's the whistling face, which I think he did once, right? He whistled one time. So <laughs> we get a whistle face. Very Transformers. Um, I can't show the faces because my camera doesn't really pick up faces very well. Um, he has the angry face. See, he's very like, angry. He and he doesn't have leg. his goggles on. He has an angry face, a whistle face, a scared face, and a standard flat say, face. You forced me to take all these out. Oh, crap. I just had some glasses fall off. Oh, there, no. Oh, there, there's an extra pair of glasses in there. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. There's Never an extra mind. pair of glasses. So, anywho, there are four faces... With and without glasses. Whistling, oh no, look at your scared. antenna there. Or is that how that one's molded? Or is that warped? It's probably it's just warped. warped. It's yeah, mine's plastic. not like that. Yeah, the, the plastic on the antenna is soft. It can be bent. It can be warped. But yeah, his camera's coming through pretty clearly on the faces. All the faces look good. All the faces look like they came right off the page. I enjoy having the screaming face. I enjoy having the angry face. The listening face comes off awkward, just like it did in the original panel where it showed up. So I probably won't use that. It just looks strange. But the other two I like a lot. And I'm never going to use the default face because why have them showing no emotions like all the rest of my stupid Transformers that have no emotions? These are emotional characters, right? He's upset all the time. Everybody's upset all the time. It's good. So I really like that feature. Do I like 
that instead of most, so most companies that make lots of extra faces, like Good Smile for Figma and those types of companies, most of the time they make just the face part, right? And use it, making just the face part means that you have the annoying thing of pulling the head apart, take the face off, but you also are not paying nearly as much because they're just molding a tiny piece of plastic instead of molding the whole head, which is, you know, detailed and nice looking, painted and pretty, right? So that saves costs. This was not cost effective. This was not yeah, cost effective, again, which makes the I whole figure as, cost as more. Rob, as Rob said, it doesn't really add to the cost. I think what the thing is, is if you look at what MMC has done, especially with their smaller figures, is they essentially need to charge $120 or around there for a release. So they've done some stuff where they've done uh, a couple of okay, smaller fine. figures it's and they got a re... Uh, the um, It doesn't matter. We can... I can think it added to the cost. You can think it not added to the cost. I actually like it and you don't. <laughs> no, but I, I, what I'm saying though is, is if you look at all the releases, like some, they've, they've tried different things with smaller figures and every single one that they've done, people have complained about it. When they put in, they throw in that brawn or whatever that everybody hated, right? And so, you know, that's the thing is, is like, do you want some remold or whatever that they threw in or do you want, you know, a bunch of extra, extra. Fixes. I think the only one who complained about rewind was Christian. That's true. Who I did complain about it. rewind? That's me. Ridiculous. He didn't like it. That... it. made him get rid of the figure. He didn't like it so much. Did. You don't like Chrome Dome and Rewind together? I sold them at Baltimore. They're gone. Oh man. But re rewind was part of it, and also the lack of paint on Chrome Dome was a big part of it. He does lack a lot of paint. Ron does not. Ron has the right amount of paint. He's he's pretty and detailed like he should be. The hands I feel less passionately about than the faces because the hands just don't add as much for me. I'm not going to use them as much. Also, I don't really think these hand poses are very interesting. He has open hands. He has kind of like holding a gun, which is a little out of character. He has like holding his hand out like that. I have a stance on Transformers, and that's that they should have posable hands with yes. fingers. I absolutely cannot stand the here's 800 hands for your like. I mean, honestly, I don't even like it with normal action figures, you know, like Legends or whatever. But I get that those don't have a lot of joints. Um, I would much rather have posable hands, even on small figures. Like, like you can mold even some of the fingers together. This thing, you can do yeah. this sometimes. You know, put two and two. Yep. I would but, rather that every time. But, you know, new... MMC's done this before. They did yeah, it with their yeah, not RC. Yeah, and it's terrible there, too. You can't even yeah. transform it if you don't so, have one set of hands on. <laughs> so I would say I, I like this better than the RC. I did not like the RC because there was only one set of hands that you could really transform it with and have it be under the car. And so I couldn't just pick whatever my favorite set of hands was and then have it like transform correctly. Yeah. This one is not as big of an issue. So I picked the hands that I like. These are the hands I'll have on forever. Um, and, uh, and I like it. So I picked the ones that work with his accessories, which I think again is more of them yes. trying to pack value into it, which mm -hmm. you know his little thing here, it attaches, it's well-made. Um, and then, you know, he's get his little ship. So I got the hands that looked good with those and he'll yeah. put them on so he can, he can have all his doodads. Um, yeah. I won't leave the thing on his backpack when it's on the shelf. He'll probably just be in scooter mode sitting next to him or whatever, but I think they work well for that too. And I, I do think it's a really cool touch that they put in a character moment, you know, ha the fact that he makes model ships and he has his motives for doing so, but the fact that he makes model ships and he came with one. It's just cool because, you know, it's just a it's just a little thing about his character, a little thing about his personality that they did pack into the figure so you can display it with him some way. You know, he probably needs to hold it, honestly, unless you just happen to have a trophy rack for your toys to put their things on. Then he would need a bunch more. But like I said, I'm really happy with the features of the figure, like as far as, you know, capturing the character I'm just not quite like, and I would say like, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but if I had to, you know, say recommend versus not recommend, I would say I would recommend this for anyone who can look past how much they paid for a figure. 
and just say, you know, this is the only version of him. This is the only way to get this. Am I okay with, or can I just ignore the fact that I paid too much and just enjoy it? Then it's the figure for you because everything else is enjoyable about this experience. Uh, like I mean, it's I fun. Think, and, and, One little thing. I don't know. We, we probably need, should do a, um, talk about the figure. Uh, uh, no, I was going to say we should probably do a TFLP about this, you know, and, and just talk about the fact that, I don't know. I, I mean, I do feel like, I'm an old man or whatever when I'm complaining about prices because it's like back in my back day, day. deluxes were only ten dollars and they came with more stuff than they do now. Um, <clears throat> but uh, but yeah, like I, I mean, to me, I feel like there's been inflation with everything. It's the cost of admission. Like there's been a ton of figures that have are a lot more expensive than what this is and it's just i mean that's just what it is like if you want to play the game and so that's what i don't know like i've kind of debated about that myself you know again like that new planet x grimlock like looks absolutely fantastic it looks like it's a a great figure it's 200 dollars. it's like well like can i justify that to myself in my budget and all that kind of thing to do it but that's that's a story for another day i mean i feel like that this is again that it's it's the definitive wrong. It looks very, uh, you know, it looks great. I think they did a fantastic job with with all the paint and whatnot. Like, that's one thing that I like about MMC now versus several years ago is they're putting all, uh, like, like this looks like wrong, you know? Like, they didn't they didn't skimp on paint apps or anything like that to make them, you know. No, it looks right. It looks like him. It looks right. Aside from one error, but... That one drives me wild. You know how I am about proportions. His head's too small. Ron is always drawn with a big head. And they gave him a small head. It doesn't need to be small for his transformation. There's actually lots of room where it goes. It's just small because it is. And it could have been so much bigger. I think that's an aesthetic choice. Because whenever I feel like people, or the very few times people put like, proportionate heads on things everyone complains about oh their heads are huge because we're so used to the heads being smaller than they should be his he's always drawn with a big head like they always wanted to emphasize his eyebrows and his facial expressions yeah. so he's like, always I'm not with a arguing. larger head and I, I would have just i would like him so much more if he looked like his comic book version by having a bigger head but it's little things like that that can sometimes set me off on a figure, right? When I, I look at know. something, it's just like the shoulders are weird or the head's too small. It can completely make me go, oh, I don't like it anymore. See, see, and that's the thing is, is like, I just don't see it. And I know that there's been other figures that have been like that, too. Like that Earthrise Optimus that you and I debate about that, like every day and Sunday or whatever, where I think it looks great and you think that it looks like horrible, that it's disproportionate. Refractor soldier shoulders. Well, how many shows so, have we lost as arguing about refractor so shoulders? So the refractor shoulders, like I can get, I, I see, I, I completely understand what you're seeing. Oh, I, still I see, I see what you're saying about hoist and whatever, but it's a twenty dollar figure, whatever. Right. Like I'm this, right about all of it. But to me, I feel like this looks right. Like no. I. It wasn't something where you like when you said that. I was like, I don't know what you're saying. Like I was trying to go back through the comics right. and like, because I was like, I guess. But the thing is, is like again with all of these comic figures, like with any of them, like you could literally pick out one issue where the head looks right, and you could pick out another issue where it looks like it's too small. Like just like that's I was about just the to way say, comics are. before before I even brought this up, I thoroughly looked through many different images of Ron just to make sure that it was that it was consistently bigger because I know how it is when I point something else to Lucas, I'll be like, hey, his head's too small and it really bugs me. He'll start sending me images and be like, look, Anna, this is evidence you are wrong. <laughs> so I thought, you know what, I'm going to make sure he can't do that this time because <laughs> I'm it, just it, right. It's one of those that ultimately, yeah. like, since these aren't things that really existed somewhere and these aren't, you know, movies, like real right. life movies that – at the end of the day, it's just a matter of what is your mental canon of what these characters look like after your years of experience with them, ultimately. And so it's like, well, it's actually a little, it's like, for whatever reason, I got a different impression and that's what's in my head and that's what I want to have on my shelf. 
you know, unless you're just way else. off. But the other thing know. too is, is like if you go look at through the catalog of MMC figures, none of them have been a hundred percent accurate. I mean, it's not like these no. are licensed no. figures and whatnot too. Yeah. And so, like, I think they've done a better job of that recently compared to what they used to. But like, like that hot rod is not the or the no, Rodimus it's way off. Not is like way off. I think it's a fantastic yeah. toy, but it's not accurate. It's fine. Yeah, it's good. It'll do, pig. It'll do. Right. It's... Don't go get the SXX one or S well, one look because accurate. it looks more accurate. Because you'll be disappointed in the crap that is in the fact that it's garbage. You could do what I did and get the Flame Toys kit. That the model kit will be fine. That's a that's a good choice. And since he's a little bit smaller, he might be proportionate with this guy. Yeah. That actually uh-huh. could technically work because then the Megatron would be more proportionate too. But. Yep, because he'd be the same size, he'd be bigger than Rodimus, and then you just need everyone else. Which there's a few other characters that have been in Flames Voice. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Like, that is, between that and the price are the only things I don't like about this. I love the fact that he has his little um, extender arm with his pad on it. That is really fun. That it's able to do that. It's just a. It's another little touch, like the ship, that didn't have to be there. We would have never. We wouldn't have known to ask for it if they hadn't put it on there. We would be like, I sure wish he had his pad on a little stick that he could use. But <laughs> since it happened, we're like, Ooh, this is nice. I like this. Or the fact that he gets his, you know, scooter that did he use this once or did he use it more than once? A couple times. Probably a couple times. Okay, good enough. So he gets a scooter, and they made it where it folds up and goes on his back, which is cool. It's a little annoying that you have to parts form it in order to put it on his back, just because, again, the price of the figure. And it's like, I have to parts form this extra accessory. It's just silly. But it's fine. You know, it looks good. It does what it's supposed to. He can stand on it. It's wheels roll. It's whatever. All three of those accessories, the ship, the pad, the scooter, they're all things that let you actually like capture his personality, make the figure, take the poses you wanted to. So they're really cool things. So I'm like really happy about all of it, other than the fact that it, it ended up being more expensive than its size class and its head's too small. <laughs> you know, this is one of those where I forget the feet. As a masterpiece guy, like <sighs> I have a budget and that determines how much I care about the price. Like is the truth of it. Like, I mean, yeah, I wish everything was $10 or whatever. You know, who doesn't? Um, but at the end of the day, it's, I really want that character. I want a great looking version of that character and no one else is going to do it. It's this or nothing. And I, you know, it's kind of one of those, given what we've heard about sales from the reformatted line, I'm kind of feel like we're almost lucky that it even came out. Um, we are. And so, like, I'm just so happy that it exists and it fit within my budget, ultimately, you know, that that I'm good with it. Now, if it was like five hundred dollars, I would have to draw a line, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> like that's way over it, even for me. Uh, okay. But ultimately, through the day, it's does it meet the quality I want? Does it look like what I want? And can I fit it in my budget? And the answer is yes, because I, you know, I don't I, I buy much fewer toys, but they're all much more expensive. You can also fit yeah. it in your pocket. You can definitely fit them in your pocket. So, that budget I'm, thing and what you collect thing is why I did not get it, actually. It's the yeah. same exact reason. It's just it's the other side. Probably, yeah, the other side. I'm a classics guy, so even though I really like Rung, like a lot, like a lot, a lot, this doesn't fit my collection. It would be well, a, 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 an interesting one-off that would sit by itself and be way more expensive than anything else around it. The question like, I have about that, though, is, is did you keep your DJD shelf? That's what I was going to ask. So, so, do you not have a, an IDW collection anymore? That's not a one off, though. It's a DJD. five off. Uh, so, that's it. You don't have any of the other lost Or a seven thing. off. Nope. I have Override left, actually. Well, that's for different reasons. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the thing that's really hard is, is like, I know that uh, there are a lot of people that have their lost light shelves and whatnot. And, you know, I cannot mix the Hasbro, like, the Hasbro figures with the MMC stuff. I just don't feel like it, it, Can't do you it. Know, looks right and whatnot. I think maybe like the Takara brainstorm might be the only one that I could potentially maybe think about doing. I have that, that and the ultra Magnus yeah. mixed in. 
because that's yeah. probably enough. But like even the skids, it's it looks like it looks the part. It's not. It doesn't go with the MC stuff. I have skids and uh, Nautica on there as well. Oh God, the Nautica. Oh. beggars can't be choosers man like oh. i am very happy to get rid of that figure i mean like it's not a bad toy or anything but you know it, it is, is not and, nautica and, and that's the thing that i really am hoping is is like if they could just mmc could eke out those last ones like or if some you know company could take like if um, be nautica it, it is a one-off that uh the ultra magnus that's coming out the more than meets the eye um from uh iron factory if someone if I, if it's Iron Factory or someone else could just upscale that about like four or five Come on, times. Come on, Mech Toys. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> but, and make it to where it scales with MMC. If, like just so I, I could just put that little ex, that last few guys. If I have my dates right, the tenth anniversary of this book is in two more years. So Hasbro may acknowledge at that point and make a couple of these figures. And that'll be cool. They could. No, I could see that. Like no, what the, no, what they would do is it's in the it'll be in the legacy line or legacy two whatever legacy three. They update them. And so it'll be like yeah. now it's wrong, but G one version. <laughs> Wait, it takes it to a crowbar, right? right? And then and then <laughs> they'll slap that into hold. the new comic, and so then it'll be comic accurate because. Or they'll um they'll keep doing flame toys kits. They, I mean, they seem pretty happy to let flame toys do all yeah. that they want to do with IDW. They could. There's not and many of those each year, but they do exist. If there was a flame choice kit for him, I would regret that this figure a thousand times more the moment it was announced. Because I would just, I don't need him to transform because I'm never going to display or really play with that saying he turns into. It'll be really funny in like two years when they announce the Flame Toys kits, but the fact that inflation keeps going up, that the Flame Toys kit will end up being as much as this $600. is. $600. Yeah, it'll be like 100 oh, bucks. <laughs> so, Christian, what would have been your price point to get this? Or is it just flat out doesn't fit anymore? You got your DJG and that's all you really want. You know, it's a good question. I would have been happy to have had it as a one-off by itself for... 60 to 70 dollars that's what it looks like to me yeah and i would have had no regret at that price i would have just been like i could fully enjoy it i wouldn't have this thing hanging over my head of this is overpriced i can't like it i mean if you compare it to like modern day legends and stuff it it doesn't work this way but if you pretend that it's proportionally you know like well if a 70 dollar legends is this then if you had a figure this tall it would be 110, 115, <laughs> you know, which some people, the mental gymnastics, you know, help them kind of get over some of that. See, I, so, I $40 legends. Oh, I, you picked it. You picked the one that crushes the argument. That's a big fan <laughs> toys, though, isn't it? So, it's, yeah. Oh, so they didn't do any engineering. It's, it's an original plus. mold. No, it's an original mold. Oh, okay. Um, they made their own triple changers. I live in, I live in Hasbro land. That's what the prices so, are to me now. I yeah, made a, so, a moratorium not to buy figures that are over a hundred dollars, with the exception of like Titans. So know, like, feel, that's that's where I live. This that's a good that. idea. I feel like I'm like kind of like Rob, where you know I like I debate about it ahead of time again, like the Planet X Grimlock. Um, but then like once I have it, like I can't even remember how much I spent on some of the DJD. Like I'm like, you know, was it? it was a hundred and something, but I don't remember exactly what it was. And the, you know, the same thing with uh, the overlord and, and whatever. Um, like, I feel like once it's on your shelf, you know, it's like, I'm not sure that, you know, and that's how I am. Like I want him on my shelf. I may, because we talked about it so much. I might be like, yeah, I remember that thing was cost more than I thought it should have, but whatever. I'm not ultimately not going to care. I'm just happy to have the shelf. But perceived financial security definitely affects the way you collect, yes. right? Like if you feel that you are more financially secure and can get yourself not to worry about how much you spent on toys, then little things like this guy costs more than I okay. wanted I'm, I'm to gonna, is not going to bother you. I got to interrupt your phrasing there. I do care how much I spend on toys a lot. Like, okay, I didn't very... infer that you didn't care about how much you spent it's on just, toys. It is budgeted and it's within the budget. Then it's not that I don't care, so I don't have to, I don't stress about it. Right, right. 
I just meant to say that when you when you feel less secure with your finances in general, the, yeah. the purchase of a toy is going to be more like, oh, my goodness, I can't believe, you know, this was the one toy I got and I made but, this choice. But Good again, grief. it's like talking about budgets. Like, again, Christian has a budget as well and yeah. it doesn't fit in his budget. But that's because he also collects all this Hasbro mainline, you know, and that's his priority. Whereas Rob yep. does not you know, like pre-order the mountain of toys, you know, from, from Hasbro. So. Oh, I it's pre-order the mountain these days. of crap from X trans bots and fans toys. Like I have a spreadsheet to track it all. Cause it, like, if you get all your stuff from pulse, at least it's on one site. Although good luck finding anything in the world's worst order history screen that I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I have to keep a separate sheet for that. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're all doing it. We're all keeping our sheets to know where the hell, our stuff Unfortunately, is Unfortunately, you have to, or you just yeah. don't know. So, I definitely have plenty in the pre-order bucket, hurt, hurting the whole wallet. But it's just, it's 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 just a different different way yeah. of doing it. I don't know, but like, like I, I again, I feel like to me that it's like yes, I would rather it be ninety or hundred dollars or whatever. But the extra twenty bucks and whatnot, like it's it's not something that that bugs me. I. You it's not going to keep me up at night. I, I, I feel like in general, it's it, like with the third party stuff, it's not the cost of one figure. It's the cost of all of them. Like that's really what more I look like, look at is, is like, I'm, I'm looking at like, do I want to continue to have the budget, you know, with this overall, not just like, is it, is it just this one? And so that's the trouble I'm having again with that Planet X Grimlock is because it's $200. And, you know, whereas I feel like some of these figures where it's like the $100 level, I don't I don't feel quite as bad. And again, like they like most of these third party figures come out, what, once every three months or whatever. Like, I mean, they don't come out that often. So, like, no. I think, no. again, like if you're only collecting that, it's different than if you're like, collect, you know, throwing your money yeah. at all the Hasbro stuff, too. Yeah. The, uh, I agree. We talk about value, and MMC put out the uh, Star Convoy earlier this year as well, and no, I found that a value. Like that thing was like what was it 160 or 190? I can't remember. Yes, it was 140. It was 140. That thing is fucking huge. Yeah, it is it's huge. It's solid. Things the quality is notably less. Like I'm happy with it because especially at 140, I got a Star Convoy to put on my masterpiece shelf. Again. No one else is going to touch that character realistically. Like, so, you know, I'm very happy with it, especially 140. What? But it shows. Like, if I put that up against any reformatted figure or even other Ocular Max figures, you're just like, oh, oh. But, like, is it good enough? Yes. It's absolutely good enough. Um, it got me the figure. I didn't have to pay $300 for it, $400 for it, $500 for it. It's so large, it could have been that in third party land. But, I you know, have. The quality on this is way better than that figure, um, but you know. And then it's also like at least today it's only fifteen dollars cheaper. Apparently it was one ten when we bought this off of PSX. But you know, it just kind of, it kind of shows that I would rather have the quality figure, right? At least in this case where it was only sixty bucks more. It was like three hundred bucks more for a nicer Star Convoy. It's a harder sell, but yeah. But that's the thing again too is is that if you would have told me. And said, oh, well, it, you know, it would have been $90, but it wouldn't have all the paint apps that it does. Well, I would rather pay the price that it is. Like, I'd rather pay $110, 120 and have it like, this is my thing. Because I'm, I'm not going to customize and paint it. Like, I, I don't yeah. do that. And so that's where I'd rather just have it, you know, like, I would rather come with the accessories that it needs to come with. I'd rather have it. Like have the paint apps that it has, and if that means it's an extra twenty bucks over what I'd like to pay, I'm okay with that so, again. But it's it's not coming out that often. Like again, my only complaint with this figure is with the the uh, the angles and whatnot that I wish that, that could be a little bit better. But otherwise, I think it's a it's a perfect figure, and it's I think a fantastic version of Rung. All of the heads are very expressionate. Um, like I think they did a great job with all of those and the paint on all of those. Um, so. Yeah. I, I, I agree with all that. I think a lot of it just comes down to, you know, you have to know what you're kind of doing here. And if, 
price affects how much you enjoy a toy, you know, that could be a problem for this particular figure. It is for me. It is not for, like, anyone else I've talked to. Everybody else I've talked to has been like, this is wonderful. I'm so happy. Yeah. So, and I it's mean, great. I know, I, I know, like, I feel like you and Christian both, I think, are both kind of like that. Because, you, like, I know, Christian, you've done that a lot with, like, third-party figures where you're like, this, to me, is an $80 toy, not a $90 toy or whatever, you know. And, and you I don't know, think I split it that close, but yeah. Yeah, whatever, kind of. Um, kind of thing but i don't know i I'd, I'd rather have it because again like the that mmc cyclonus like it frust that figure frustrates me that they couldn't have just spent the extra you know whatever and put out a i don't want to talk figure. about it still don't have a good idw cyclonus the best no. bet is honestly fans toys I, and I honestly that doesn't fit it. at all with that shelf. No, it doesn't at all. Like that's what I was like. God, could someone take the fan toys version and downscale it a whole bit and make it so it's out of plastic and not all the right? diecasts? Like just That'd be so great. I can get the... Yeah, no, that like that again is is the thing that that frustrates me is I would much rather spend a hundred and twenty for this than ninety for the Cyclonus that I spent. So yeah. It's one of those there where I love the Cyclonus from IDW, but it is it just doesn't even evoke the character for me, so I didn't buy it. So I have that gap there. You know, this absolutely evokes the character. Yeah, you know, absolutely. that's 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 where my recommendation ultimately comes from. Is you know, does it evoke the character? Is it a piece of garbage? And it definitely evokes the character. It is not a garbage toy. Not at all. Um, you know, it's it's well made. Has a bunch of fun little doodads with it. Um, so yeah. The only real hang up here is price, which, you know, just that depends on the person. So, I mean, I kind of feel like you knew as soon as this was announced whether or not you were going to buy it mm-hmm. because, you know, of how much you love wrong. And if you're into, you know, MMC's IDW line, you know, it's kind of ultimately it. My honestly, my initial decision was no. And then I started thinking about how many other robot psychologists were going to get released as toys <laughs> and be a non-robot psychologist i just thought you know this is my one opportunity to have a transformer that went to college for the same thing as me so even you though we're to. different kinds of psychologists well that was the thing right. i was i was kind of wondering about that uh anna because i know you don't have the same connection to uh, you know, more than meets the eye and whatnot that other people do. Like you like it okay, but it's not like you're like, oh man, this is my favorite thing ever. And so right. that's what I was kind of wondering why you even bothered getting this, but I guess it makes sense when you No, this is the psychologist that. thing. Because yeah. I started to think about how, you know, Glyph is relatively close because she comes off as an anthropologist, but she's not a psychologist. He is relatively close because he is a clinical psychologist. I'm a social psychologist. So it's like if I keep collecting the characters that get relatively close to my career field. Now I'll do feel you need, included. Um do you need the other DJD guy back so that you can have a chair to to put your people <laughs> in? Or... I actually have a decent amount of chairs that I've bought of various types. They don't transform, but they are chairs. The the or the toilet bot you could always have them. You go poop. <laughs> Rob's can go poop. Mine can't. I never got the toilet. Uh, I have three toilets. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Well, <laughs> weird flex. Not okay. That's Great definitely okay. flex. Definitely approved. It, I, it meant I won the oddities episode of Ouch My Wallet out the gate. I was like, here's three toilet transformers. And there was a help. Oh. And then we talked about poop for 30 minutes, so it was, it was great. It's good being an so adult. I'm sad I missed that episode. <laughs> yeah, it was like the Should anti-Christian be. episode. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Damn. It was creative and fun and off the wall. So yeah, so I'd I'll say that if, if you're an about. MMC collector and you like Rung, I think that I would definitely recommend this figure. There's nothing no issues with this and, and whatnot. Like, so, you know, it's up on BBTS and, yep. and chosen prime and some places like that. So if you need to, it's not going to come till the spring, but. And I agree. Uh, Unless you have my hand up, go get it. You probably yeah. don't have my hand up, so you'll be fine. Well, yeah, right. If you were only I mean, on the, no, oh, 
like how much you can see how you know if you have the hang up you know if if you sit there and look at your figures and you know how much you paid for every single one of them because i do then you know it's gonna bug you yeah. yeah. If you were on the fence because you're like, huh, I wonder how it's going to look or this and that, or is it, those concerns should be out the window. You're good to go. But if you're like, yep. you know what, I think he's a little expensive, then you should stay away because you're going to feel double that once you get it in hand. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. We got wrong. I'm happy. Yep. He's exactly. fun. I'm happy to have Take him another box. I'm going to see he keeps doing a good job. So. You know what nobody has? Nobody says, oh, where's my IDW of robots in disguise shelf? <laughs> right. <laughs> no one says that. And I was like, oh, I need that IDW of Bumblebee. Even though I like his I really art. like Windblade from that, honestly. That, that, that exists already. That was a Hasbro toy. Oh, I can't remember. I know. I would like, I know, really like that Windblade, though. Isn't that, isn't Windblade, wasn't that the Generations toy at the time, too? Yeah. No. Yeah. She's she's actually like a good she's design. Quite, quite a bit different. Yeah. She doesn't. Mm. You just get the flame. Nothing gets first. close to evoking the Windblade miniseries Windblade Lock. Her first, yeah, her first appearance was the Generations toy, and then subsequent appearances was different. Yeah. Got it. That was a nice period there when the comics and the toys were in lockstep a bit. It kind of felt forced sometimes to put the characters in there. But it was they nice. They weren't in lockstep like they are now, where they they're, just they're straight draw the now, toys. Rob. Because they force them to draw the you know, comics with you the know toy what? designs. You know what? It doesn't affect me. I don't read those comics, and I buy very few of those toys. So, so uh, I recommend some of the comics. I like your records so far, it's fun. Yeah, I need to. It's read not them. records. It's all right. I don't got time in my life. I. So, um, you know, comics takes a lot of reading. Com- Speaking of comics, um, there is a book club this weekend uh, on Sunday night at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central. And they're uh, actually talking about, um, what's the, what was it again, Anna? Till All Are One, One and Two. Till All Are One, One or Two. So that's starting that series out. There's 12 total. The first two are going to be this weekend at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central on the TF Talk Discord. Yep, it'll Brooklyn. be fun. Before we before we uh, split here, right at the start of the show, Rick had asked our Rick, "What would they repaint this into?" And I have there no is, idea. There is a shatter glass run. Maybe that's a All TFCon right. exclusive. Next, next <laughs> TFCon exclusive, buddy. That's so there, fine. there's nothing else that works, really, is there? Like, who else transforms into a stick? Or what? What kind of garbage could you throw on there? I mean, I think the only thing is, is like if you wanted to redo the uh, Voss and make yeah. it a heavy a remold, easier, you're not gonna like, pull a god out of this. I don't this. know why you would bother. Yeah. With that, but yeah, otherwise, and and that might be part of the thing too. Is is like, I think I would all rather, of the above is I the would price. rather them do stuff like this and charge a little more than make it so it's not accurate again, like that Cyclonus, like yeah still pisses me off you know i i could have honestly dealt with him having been a um a can remold and repaint that would have been fine they could have just taken the kibble off of him and turned him into something resembling the stick and it would have been fine so the fact we get a new yeah. figure even better i suppose yeah. So yeah, Um, remold him is nothing. (laughs) Well, thank you guys. Um, And thanks to everyone in the chat. Uh, Rick, of course, who was here earlier. Uh, Ron was here. Um, Randall, Catherine, and um, who else am I missing? Phil was in there too. Ron was there, I think. Who else? I think I saw Ron there. Ron. Maybe he's just usually there, so I thought he was. Yep, yep, yep. So... But uh, anyway, well, uh, thank you guys, and we will see you next week. Yeah. Well, actually, we won't. Two weeks. Sorry. Two weeks. Yeah. We'll be back eventually. Next week is the day before Black Friday. There you go.